We need to talk about the week ahead. We got a lot of important economic data. We can talk about what Business Insider and ING is saying about U.S. inflation. We can talk about the All In podcast. We can talk housing. But first, I want to thank you for being here today. This is the Daily Financial News. We normally do these live, but actually, I think I'm going to be at 30,000 feet when this should be going. So I wanted to record it early. So, of course, we continue the streak. Folks, let's talk about the All In podcast. I don't know if you took a listen this week. You got to the end of it. But I think there was a lot of important charts that Chamath put out about the economy, about inflation, about growth. And uh, most importantly to me was his discussion on inflation. Inflation is driving the bus. Jerome Powell is out there trying to talk the market up even though the market is currently pricing in four rate cuts. The reality is, as Chamath pointed out, and you and I have discussed for six months, inflation is coming down. Yes, folks, given the way inflation is calculated, especially around housing, we are going to see shelter inflation down the next four months or so. We brought this to you early, but now more and more people are talking about it. So, hey. Pat yourself on the back. We were early and it is happening, not to mention what is happening to oil and gas. So the real question, just because we were right about inflation, what happens next? That is the important question. Do we see the Federal Reserve finally capitulate and say we are done, right? Right now there are still threats about going higher. Perhaps with the inflation reading cracking below 3%, they will say, you know what, we've done enough. I am not here talking about rate cuts, although there would be plenty of people because again, interest rates are about 200 basis points restrictive. If inflation falls a point or a point and a half, will the Federal Reserve sit back and let the restrictive nature of interest rates continue to rise, especially if we are in a recession? I think, the de- I think the answer to that is unequivocally no. You could definitely see rate cuts. Shout out the All In Podcast for sharing that with us. Let's talk about the week ahead. We have a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot of Fed speeches next week. I think everyone is speaking. Some folks are speaking twice. They will undoubtedly move the market. When I'm listening to Fed speak, I'm basically trying to figure out who is a hawk, who is a dove. What do I mean by that? I want to see how many people talk about the Fed going higher, a la Jerome Powell, and how many people talk about the Fed being done, ideally Mary Daly. I think, let's see, there's, uh, there's one on Monday, four on Tuesday, three on Wednesday, six on Thursday, and four on Friday. So when I say a lot of Fed speeches, a lot of potentially market moving. But again, who's a hawk, who's a dove? What else is happening next week? Well, we get CPI. Again, we get CPI headline, CPI core, CPI month on month, CPI year on year. Folks, this is going to move the market. CPI headline is going to go down. Uh, The current expectation is we're going to go from 3.7 to 3.2, and it may go down more than that. Core. Core is forecast to go up medical services, some other things like that. So we're going to have to watch. We're going to have to watch core. Is it flat? Does it go up as expected? Uh, A lot of stuff. And that is going to come to you on Tuesday. Wednesday, we get PPI, producer price index, but we also get retail sales. We are an economy driven by consumerism. We are an economy that's driven by us, the consumers. Is retail sales cracking? It's long been predicted that the consumer is breaking, but what does retail sales have to say? On Thursday, we will get some housing data. We are starting to roll into housing season. We will get builder confidence. I can't see how it goes up. It may go up simply because it is is so bad, Uh, but again, does it go lower? We will also get weekly unemployment rates, uh, unemployment claims. Uh, Unemployment claims are trickling higher. Does the trend continue? And then Friday, we get housing starts. Yes, there's a lot of inventory, but what are they doing? We are starting to hear, or at least I'm starting to hear from more and more builders about them pausing, stopping. It may be because they don't see the demand, or it may be because regional banks aren't lending. Folks, 
right? We are seeing M2 money supply shrink. We are seeing banks get more conservative. We are seeing banks not lend. We are going to see building roll over. We are going to see small businesses struggle. This is just where we are. How about ING? Shout out to the team at Business Insider for this article. ING says that U.S. inflation will hit 2% by April. Falling oil, falling rent, falling vehicles, all in a deflationary uh, fall. I don't know about 2% by April. It will certainly have a two handle on it, but it will it hit the inflation target of 2% even. That might be a little early. We might be at 2, 3, 2, 4, something like that, but uh, definitely rolling over if it happens, right? We're talking early Q2. Will the Fed be done? Of course, you know what I think the Fed is done, but here's the deal. Will they cut? Just play it out for yourself. Inflation is three and a half. Inflation falls to two. That's 150 basis points. We are currently sitting at restrictive interest rates of about 200 basis points. So all you have to do is add 150 to 200. You will basically get a doubling almost. What will the Fed do? There's a chance. There's a chance that the Fed looks at 350 basis points of restrictive nature and cuts. I am not calling for it, but you certainly can make an argument for it. How about on the housing front? Shout out Logan Matashami from Housing Wire. Logan is an excellent follow on Twitter or X. He is constantly battling the doomers and crash bros. I have no idea how he does it every day, especially from the no name hide behind some silly made up name, but he does a great job. What is he talking about? Inventory. Well, according to Housing Wire, week on week, inventory went up 59 homes. Folks, this is important, certainly interesting. Typically, we hit the year peak in October and start rolling over. We are now clearly in the you know, early to middle part of November. And you know, mathematically, 59 more is still 59 more. We haven't rolled over, but it is clearly slowing down. To be clear, this is not new listing activity. This is demand dropping. So it will be interesting to see what happens now that rates are at seven and a half versus 8.1 uh, going forward. It, it is the slow season. It is winter. It is the holidays. Don't expect much, but the housing market might, might be normalizing. Right now there is 566,941 active single family homes. Last year, last year this time, there was 572,347. So that's a drop of about 1% or so. Just so you know, 2015, let's take a year uh, before all this madness. 2015, there were 1.135 million homes. So we are about half that. We are about 50% of active listings for 2015. Just so you know, we did make an important mark this week. This week marked the first time that new listings exceeded 2022. Yes, we are up on 2022 week, week to week, right? This week versus last year. That's interesting. That's the first time. Remember last year, housing just stopped. Now we seem to be really accepting rates. We are seeing a lot of price cuts. Price cuts are currently at about 39% of listings having price cuts. Last year, we were at 43%. 2021, we were at 28%. So we are above trend. Normal is about 37 to 38%. So we are above trend, but not by a lot. Uh, where's the tenure gonna go this week? We got a surprise, I don't know, if, I don't know. It's a surprise to some. Moody's downgraded the US debt, at least put it on warning, a negative, uh, a downgrade is likely coming. That will be the third and final downgrade from AAA to AA for U.S. bonds. Will that impact the 10-year? What will happen to the 10-year after CPI on Tuesday and PPI on Wednesday, retail sales Wednesday? What will happen to a potential government shutdown? Will we get another clean bill that, causes, uh, that caused the firing of Kevin McCarthy? Will there be a two-step plan? What will happen? Or, or will the government shutdown 
The government shutdown will clearly force Moody's to downgrade the U.S. debt. Where does the 10-year note go? How about Goldman Sachs? Goldman Sachs is out admitting that the 2023 economy exceeded expectations. In fact, the chance of a recession is down again, according to Goldman Sachs. It is down to 15%. And Goldman Sachs is saying disinflation is going to continue. That is really tying in with what ING said earlier, that the uh, inflation reading could be 2% by as soon as April. Again, we talked about yesterday the uh, U.S.-Michigan Survey of Consumer Confidence. It was bad, bad, bad. It's down four months in a row. And again, what's important in this reading is not only the consumer is negative, but the consumer also expects inflation. That is, and said another word, stagflation. Stagflation is what the U.S.-Michigan Survey of Consumer Confidence is telling us. That is not good. The government, the Fed, the Treasury really doesn't have a game plan for stagflation. They can, inf they can fight inflation, they can fight low growth, but can they fight stagflation? Because the tools that they have really you know, don't work that way. So it will be very, very interesting. How about Barron's? You could throw Barron's on top of the crash bros. Barron says the ugly side in the home price is, is if you get waves of sellers as buyers retreat. Think about what we're seeing here in November and December, right? New listings. Again, Logan from Housing Wire said new listings are above last year, i.e. more supply. And then we have falling demand, i.e. active listings. So Barron's is out talking about the consumer confidence is shaken. When Barron says the consumer psychology is shaken, that's important because again, the consumers drive the economy. So if the consumers are in a negative mindset and you get more and more must sells, what might happen? Uh, Barron's is actually calling for, actually, let me be very clear, Moody's Analytics, Moody Analytics in a Barron article is calling for prices to fall, drum roll please, three, to 4% in the second half of 2024. A couple of things of note, a three to 4% fall in home prices in a six month period is um, certainly possible. We have seen that before. The reason I wanna bring that up is again, lots of the crash bros and a lot of the doomers talk about things that have never happened. Like we're gonna have a 30% crash in a six or 12 month period. The, law, the historical, extreme in the Great Recession was negative 8.9. So when somebody tells you that prices are gonna crash 3X, the worst ever, don't believe them. But again, Moody's Analytics is out saying we could fall three to 4% in the second half of next year. That is absolutely possible. But here's a question. Would you call three to 4% a crash? Would you call three to 4% a correction? Just curious. What would you think? So I wanna also shout out Mohammed El Alarian. Mohammed El Alarian is out reiterating what you and I have talked about. Mohammed is saying, be ready, get this, be ready for a sharp fall in inflation. Folks, the economists are finally seeing what you and I have seen for six months. We've been calling for this a while. I have receipts on this channel. Inflation is going to, the headline number is gonna come down. Uh, as rent inflation or shelter rolls over. Remember folks, I am out traveling for a few days. I will unfortunately not be able to give you our normal interviews, which I look forward to. But bonus, feel free to leave a question below. Uh, if you uh, leave a question below that, you, that I can riff on for five to six minutes, there's a very good chance that I will answer your question, whether it be economy, real estate, travel, Whatever you want to do, if I think it's fun and beneficial, I will pick it up and I will try to record. And you know what else we could do, folks? I will try to take background video of the city we are in. Let's see if you can guess the city that we are in. And of course, folks, do yourself a favor. Buy the tickets for the One Rental at a Time celebration in Las Vegas, February 17th and 18th. It is going to be a not want to miss event. Bring your significant other. You are gonna to get to interact with 12, 13 millionaires. You're gonna to get to interact with 250 people in the audience. It will undoubtedly allow you to make 
uh, friends, new connections, and probably change your financial future. You're gonna wanna interact with these millionaires. And again, remember, I do events different. No selling, 80% driven by audience Q&A. There will be a microphone on the left side, a microphone on the right side where you can line up and ask each and every millionaire a question. You're gonna to wanna to be there, not only for your questions, but all the other amazing questions. And then finally, remember, the price of the course is going up from $399 to $499 January 1st. But for November, I'm gonna give you a special because I'm traveling and doing less stuff. I'm gonna let you have the course today at $399 and give you two $50 bonuses. You can get the Mastermind, you can get the deep Buy Box Deep Dive, the Legends of Real Estate, How to Leverage Debt Equity, whatever you want. Folks, it is time to do the work. It is time to get your Buy Box. It is time to move forward. So. Sign up. I hope to see you in Vegas. I think there's only 57 seats left. It will sell out quick. And as soon as we get sub 50, I bet you it sells out a lot faster because people don't want to miss it. Second, I will not, not, not discount the prices. If you are hoping there's some kind of price coming discount on the event, you are solely mistaken. I would never hurt the 210 folks who have already bought tickets. It's just not how I roll. Um, so again, buy your tickets now before they sell out, and I hope to see you there. How to get started one rental at a time is clearly changing lives, thousands of students. But again, remember, if you buy it, you get the two free goodies. Also, you get this Facebook group with thousands of people in it. So do yourself a favor and join. Thank you very much. Bye.